Hi, I'm Dory Lambert, and I'm the director at the Counseling Services here at K-State. Just for a little bit of uh, uh, details, uh, the PowerPoint will be a PDF that will be on our website on the Cat Chats page. So I didn't make copies of the PowerPoint for you. Uh, but some of the handouts are reflected in the PowerPoint. And I do think that you'll be uh, using these handouts both within the session as well as in the future, because we're going to be talking about helping you develop a good foundation for assertiveness. Now, I've done assertiveness training for many, many years. And as a therapist, I've worked with individuals a lot who come with all different kinds of issues. And yet, when we t sit and talk for a while, there seems to be a really fundamental theme that goes across many of the students that I work with, and that is not having a very good foundation for being able to use the skills that they already have for communicating and being assertive or for dealing with relationships. Now, we come within our center with a perspective of helping people develop skills. And sometimes when people think about assertiveness, they think just about, how do I say something to somebody? But I suspect that each of you already has some skills about how do you talk to your families, how do you talk to your friends, how do you talk to people who are close to you or people who are far away from you. But there's probably a barrier for you about actually using those skills in some situations. And so I've titled this presentation as Finding Your Own Voice uh, and Developing the Foundation for Assertiveness because our presentation today, hopefully within 40 to 45 minutes, I'm going to go over with you some things that can help you in really solidifying your strengths and your beliefs that will help you become active in using the skills that you already have and possibly even identifying those things that you're going to need to learn more skills. We have several other presentations that we'll talk about at the end so that you can actually learn maybe some more skills too. Uh, so imagine that we're going to be doing this in a fairly quick way. Uh, so I'm going to try to go through a variety of things. We're going to cover understanding your rights and your responsibilities as a foundation for your having a voice. And that's what I meant by sometimes people know skills, but they can't activate themselves to do things because they don't really understand that they have a basic right and a basic responsibility to themselves and to others. And, and if you don't know that or you don't believe that, it's really hard to take action. We're going to quickly help you assess your own and others' behavioral stances and communication style. Try to spend a few moments in helping you identify a bit about your own barriers. And then learn ways to be responsibly assertive, although some of the responsible assertion Actual communication skills would be more available next Tuesday at the next Cat Chat. You have a handout that talks about human rights. Now, within this uh, relatively small audience here in, the, in this room, and all the people who may be observing using our uh, Zoom from a distance, and people who may be looking at this presentation in the future because we do record it and put it online, there's going to be a whole range of people from all different kinds of cultures, all different kinds of backgrounds. And sometimes people might ask me, well, in my culture, we don't have these kinds of rights. But I want to help you all understand that there are some basic human rights that have actually been discussed and worked on after World War II and accepted in many, many countries, many, many different cultures. And so some of you may not even be aware that there's a universal human rights statement that's available online. So I've printed it out for you. And if you'll notice on the back page, it's on two sides. At the bottom, it shows you the website. And you can even have translations of this in multiple languages. So any of you who might be observing this from a distance 
And if your natural language is not English and you'd like to be able to look at this, I suggest you just go, or if you're practicing another language uh, as an English speaker, you can have it translated and you can read it in another language. Right. Sign in and take some material. The reason why I have listed this is that as we talk about rights and responsibilities, we're talking about a balancing act. Your rights and other people's rights. Your responsibilities and other people's responsibilities. And realistically, you only have control of your own. But if you come with the perspective that all people, no matter what their background is, no matter what their culture is, that they have basic rights and responsibilities also. No matter what your religious background is, no matter what your family background is, you're going to be learning today some things that will help you understand your, some basic rights that you have and that you'll be able to, no matter what the context, you'll be able to make some decisions to help yourself move forward. So human rights is the, both the cultural and ethical foundation for assertiveness. Um, and I added the statement about the practical values because most of us kind of, particularly in the United States, we sort of understand a bit about the golden rule. Sort of finding the middle ground on things, being able to treat people well. And I think that's kind of the quick little statement on it. We have to go back. Ah, okay. I think I had another slide before this, and I went too fast. It won't let me go. The handout that you have on rights and responsibilities is based on the idea, again, that we all have basic rights. Now, I'm going to kind of go over this with you because I want, we're, I'm going to explain this to you and I'm going to actually have you do a quick exercise while we're doing this. <laughs> I have a fast finger and it makes it go, go too quickly in one way. There you go. That's yeah. what I wanted. Notice how on this graph it has basic rights and there are arrows. These are not all the rights in the whole world, but there's some of the rights that I think over the years I found that it's really important rights that many students, many individuals who are struggling about being assertive really don't understand or know. And if you'll notice it goes from the rights about just being your own existence, just to be a person, and the arrow moves down to the rights to have feelings. And then it moves down to the rights for expressing yourself. And then the rights for being able to interact with others. And then the arrow goes back up to the rights about being. Because this is kind of the circle of life, in a sense. That each behavior, each thing that we do, builds on itself and, build, and creates a context for us. And so if there's a breakdown in any of these areas, it can't have an impact on how you are able to feel. It can't have an impact on how you can express yourself or interact with others if you don't have some fundamental beliefs about your rights about just being. And the same thing can be true. I work with sometimes individuals who have a pretty good sense of who they are, but may not understand their rights for expressing themselves. And then it kind of really has a negative impact on how they interact. So we're going to go through this handout. By first, I'd like you to maybe take a pencil out, the handout that you have in your, at your desk, and I want you to read each of these things for the rights. And as you are looking at that, if you see a right that you believe you own, it's something that you really believe and you live, Put a plus sign by it. And as you're reading that, and you notice if there's one that you, say, that you read and you say, mm, 
I don't know, it's kind of sometimes uh, it does. It, I'm not so sure you can put a question mark. And if it's one that you read and you say, gee, I didn't know anybody had that right, <laughs> put a negative sign. It's not your right. You don't believe it. You're not sure that you live it. Put a negative sign. And take just a few moments to go through that. I'm going to give you about two minutes because this will be an exercise you can keep doing later. And for, for those of you who are, again, uh, watching from a distance, uh, then we will have the PDF up on the website. Uh, so you'll be able to have a hard copy for yourself later. Now, I'm not expecting you to get all the way through that first page, but I want you to notice that you have this side of the sheet. Now, flip it over and see the other side. The other side has a similar structure for responsibilities. And it's very consciously set up as front and back, because I want you to recognize that it is a balancing act between your rights and your responsibilities and recognizing other people's rights and their responsibilities. So take a few moments and do the same thing with this uh, responsibility side. It follows a similar structure about these aren't all the responsibilities in the world, but it lists some important ones for responsibilities about being, about feeling, interacting, expressing, and can be considered as, as building blocks. So I'll give you a few moments for you to do the same thing with put a plus sign by the ones that you feel you own and you live, and they're just kind of like no-brainers to you. Put a question mark by the ones that you think well, sometimes, but not quite, I don't always, maybe, sort of. And put a negative sign by the ones that you might say to yourself, who knew? I didn't think this was a right for anybody. Or this certainly isn't a right that I feel that I own. And you can put a negative sign by that. Now, usually by this time in the afternoon, people come into our presentation and they don't expect to have to do anything, right? True? <laughs> and some of you might be in here because you're kind of encouraged to come in so you get some extra credit for a class or so. My hope is that you'll actually come out of here with a little bit more than just that. Take a moment. Think about that rights and responsibilities for how you filled it out, and what do you notice for yourself? Anybody want to share? Did anything pop out to you for yourself? You don't have to raise your hand, just speak. Okay, okay. We'll hold that for a moment because we'll go back to that. Okay, so she said that she found that she had more on her rights than on her responsibilities. How about others? I 
know that they're rights, but I don't do them all the time or expect others to do them all the time. Ah, okay. I, I'll kind of repeat just so if, in case people didn't hear, but she said that she had actually marked positives for all of them, but then realized that she didn't always uh, real, realize that she might not be thinking about it for herself or even for other people, maybe not be acting on it all the time. How about others? I'm not going to twist your arms. One of the things that I f have found over the years with many students is that they'll have a lot on one side or a lot on the other. And for many, many students who find it really difficult to assert themselves or just have a voice in situations, they may put so many of the rights and hardly any of the, of, or not, excuse me, the other way around. They'll have hardly any rights for themselves and a lot of responsibilities. Now, whichever way it turned for you, it's not like diagnostic that there's a big problem, but whichever way it turned out for you, in those situations where you may find yourself struggling to be able to speak what you think is important to you or to ask for what you need, or to acknowledge that you make mistakes and it's okay. In any of those situations, or any situation, if you're finding it's difficult for you to assert yourself in situations, you can begin to practice for yourself owning a right. Now, owning a right means, I believe very strongly, that we as human beings learn. That's why you're in the educational environment. You can learn. And in actuality, as a psychologist, I believe very strongly that you can actually retrain your brain. You can actually help yourself shift out of really negative thoughts and begin to practice and learn more positive ways of thinking. This isn't just pie in the sky, like saying, oh, if I just think good things, everything will be fine. There is an element, however, about how the mind and the body are connected that you do need to practice owning values, owning your own identity, owning your own uh, choices in order to be able to function well in the world. And I'm going to do a quick little exercise with you, which I do with many people with a lot longer, but I'm going to do a real quick exercise with you to give you an idea about how you can practice for yourself owning a right that might really be pivotal, pivotal for you about a particular thing. So think for a moment about a situation that you had, you, maybe you came here to try to figure out how could I be more assertive, how could I handle this sticky situation a little bit better. Does everybody have something in their mind? about a situation like that, then look at your rights list or the responsibilities list and see if, if you owned one of those rights that maybe you might have put a negative sign by or a question mark by. Or maybe for those of you who are really more skilled, maybe you might have had a positive sign by it, but you didn't really ever really use it very much. Pick one that you think, if you really owned it, it could help you feel that you could take action for yourself and give you a voice, that the barriers that you faced could be somewhat eased by your owning that right. Am I making sense? So what I want to do very quickly because I promise to try to get you through in a fast time. I'm going to help you with a quick little imagery exercise. This goes back to the belief that when you practice, most, at, most athletes do this. Performance enhancement entails picturing how well you can do something and then doing it. Actors and actresses do it. Vocal performers do it. They picture what they do, and the more you picture it, it practices in your mind, and it helps you then to actually do it. Make sense? So we're going to do a little quick exercise 
to help you try on owning that right. Each of you has picked one. You don't have to tell me what they are. But pick that right, get it in your mind, and I'm going to have you try it on. Are you all willing to try that with me? Okay, so this is not hypnosis. This is not going to make you talk like a chicken or anything like that. It's simply going to be, I'm going to talk you through a little visual exercise. So you might have that right in front of you, and you can close your eyes for a moment, and picture that right as if you're holding it in front of you, just right there in your hands. And imagine that right being just like a warm sweater draped across your hands. You can look at it, you can feel it, the texture, it's nice and warm, particularly here in this room, it's a little chilly, so it's nice to have a warm sweater there. Whatever that right is, say it in your mind, what that right is, and picture it as that sweater. And I want you to take that sweater and wrap it around you. Feel the warmth of that sweater, that right that's yours, it's yours. And let that warmth sink in. And in the wonders of your mind, you can feel that warmth sink in and that sweater actually melt into your body. And the right becomes something that is very warm, very comfortable. And you can feel it moving throughout your body. It goes down deep into your heart. And you can feel it in your blood. You can feel it from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. That right, the right that you had not owned before, it becomes such a part of you that it becomes you. And in your mind's eye, as you feel that and you picture that, imagine how you feel about yourself when you own that right. And notice in your mind's eye how when you feel that way about yourself owning that right, how you interact with people. Notice how they interact with you when you own that right. And let's now try with that, still with that image in your mind, you're going to give up that right. Feel that right now starting to leave every cell of your body, starts to form again just like that sweater on your shoulders. You don't feel that warmth throughout yourself anymore. That right becomes a shoulder sweater that you can just take off and hold in your hands again. And what does that feel like when you take that right away from yourself? You have it there in your hands. And this is a right that you could continue to hold in your hands. You could decide to put it back on your shoulders and carry it just enough on your shoulders, maybe not inside. You could choose to let it sink in and stay with you. Or you could put it aside and think about it later. But what do you notice about how you feel about yourself when you give up that right? And what do you notice about how people interact with you when you don't have that right? Or how you interact with people when you don't own that right? So you can choose, even now, to put that sweater back on, or to just put it on the side and think about it longer. And you can yourself decide to practice this whenever you feel that you need to bolster your sense of your right. So take a deep breath and you can open your eyes again. What was that like for you? Hokey? Interesting? Helpful? Some 
times when I've worked with groups of people or individuals, it kind of feels to them a little bit odd that they have that much power in their minds to be able to make a change in even how they feel in that image. And sometimes for some people it's hard to try using that image. But I would encourage you to take that list and to practice with it at different times for different situations. If you find that you're stuck and you don't know how you're going to be able to handle a situation, it may be that on a very fundamental foundation level, you're needing to strengthen your awareness about your rights and your responsibilities. And you may have to remind yourself again that other people have rights and responsibilities too, so that you're not over-functioning and trying to do everything for everybody else and ignoring yourself, or on the other hand, expecting everybody to do everything for you and ignoring your responsibilities. There is that balancing act in life. So the rights and responsibilities handout is a nice working handout that you yourself could even add additional ideas about what your rights are. You could explore it. You could read the human rights, uh, the uh, international human rights, and get an idea about is there something on there that you need to know and understand. So how does this help distinguish between assertiveness and aggression? And the reason why I'm focusing on that is that sometimes people come to an assertiveness workshop or a presentation and they think they know exactly what assertiveness is and exactly what aggression is and often they confuse the two. So I'm going to show you uh, some ways to try to separate it out based on the idea about balancing rights and responsibilities. We call them behavioral stances. As we go through this quickly, I want you, and you have a handout for it, I want you to think about this for yourself. Now, of course, most of us as human beings, we think about it for our friends, <laughs> our family, uh, and you could do that too at some point. But for today, right now, uh, as we go through the four stances, I want you to think about for yourself where you may be at times, or most of the time, or some of the time. The first one is to understand that being in a passive stance means that there are characteristic behaviors. A person may really be putting themselves down a lot, be pretty indirect, uh, communicate with very veiled kinds of meanings, uh, may not give good eye contact. In terms of decision making, it really a passive person lets others choose for them. How many of us at times have said, oh, whatever movie you want to go to, oh, whatever you guys want to eat. And that's OK at times. But if that's the only way you're interacting, that might be a sign that you're, making, you're letting other people make all your decisions. And often passive individuals feel like a victim, may feel really anxious, may kind of feel OK at the beginning, but then get a little bit resentful and angry, and not understanding that they have some power in this situation to make a change. And any of you who've interacted with somebody who's been passive, you might see that you react sometimes with guilt, like, I'm always making the decision. I don't really want to make them go to this restaurant all the time. Or you might get angry or frustrated. And sometimes people handle people who are passive by being protective and then getting really, really angry. So it's sort of like this like push-pull kind of scenario. So you'll notice, and I apologize for my stick figure drawing, but people who are passive basically don't feel that they have any rights, and everybody else has more rights than they do. So notice that that's really a very imbalance. I don't have any rights. Everybody else has all the rights. And passive-aggressive individuals, I'll let you read that in terms of sometimes passive-aggressive people might seem like they're being pretty passive, but then they kind of go around the back door and do something to kind of twist or hurt somebody or to get even in some way. 
And if any of you have interacted with somebody who is passive aggressive, it's kind of confusing. It's sort of like, I thought that they said that it was okay, but then why are they so pissed off about it? Why are they so mad about it? And you may actually feel manipulated. So people who are passive aggressive, basically kind of off the charts in the sense that nobody has any rights. And the person's not sure that they have rights, and so they have to kind of manipulate their way around to get the things that they need. Not a very effective way of working. Sometimes it might seem like it is because you get some of what you want, but usually at a cost. And aggressive individuals, this is kind of what makes it different than when people are thinking about aggression as only being physical aggression. When we think about it in terms of rights and responsibilities, aggressive individuals really put themselves up and put other people down. They feel that they have all the rights, and other people don't have any. So basically, if I have all the rights, I can do whatever I want. doesn't really matter. doesn't really matter what you need. And I don't really have to be responsible for the impact of what I do, because I have all these rights. So how that can really affect people is people who react can often be fearful of that person. Uh, sometimes, I know myself, it's really easy to avoid people who are aggressive. Nobody likes to have to interact with them. What happens, though, in responding in that way with, to aggressive people is that it reinforces their ability to think that they're the ones who have all the rights in the world and nobody else has any rights. And this is why it's very, very important to look at what assertiveness is. So despite what you see on TV or in the movies, being assertive is not forcing your views on other people or being angry at people and making them do things. That's an aggressive stance. But an assertive stance is understanding that we both have rights and responsibilities. And by putting yourself forward with what you know is positive and, and you're right for things, and being honest and direct with others, choosing for yourself, being, uh, feeling competent about yourself, and respecting, though, other people's rights and responsibilities also. You have a better opportunity to be able to communicate in the best way you can and possibly get a good result in the communication back because people will appreciate most often your being able to speak from an assertive stance. The workshop that's going to be coming up next week will help you learn about nonviolent communication in more detail. But I really wanted you all to understand this foundation belief about rights and responsibilities really can be seen in behaviors. And if you believe and understand your rights and responsibilities, you're more likely going to be able to act in a more assertive way and use the skills that you may already have, but actually it can give you the power to develop more skills by adding to your toolbox of skills by being in school and going to other presentations, et cetera. So I've kind of interspersed this throughout the presentation so far that if you yourself can identify where your barriers are for your being assertive and begin to practice and apply some of those rights and responsibilities to give yourself that sort of that energy to do, to act, then you'll be able uh, to, I think, be more assertive. And I'm going to give you some new other additional skills so that you can learn a bit about how you can manage your own emotional reactions. Because the truth is, even if you become very assertive and you feel very balanced, the world is full of people who are not. Even if you communicate well, people may not really understand or accept what you say. But you're just responsible for your side. 
And that's why there's lots of workshops that help with conflict resolution and with how do you get, get to workable compromises because everybody's at different levels of their skill. But when you're interacting with people who are not at the same level of skill as you are or comfort, and even when you're really feeling pretty skilled about things, you're going to have emotional reactions to an aggressive person or a passive person or a passive aggressive person because we're all human. So I'm going to show you a very quick summary sheet of some very basic steps that you can take to help yourself, we call, I call it the air model. That's a nice term, air model. When you try to be assertive and you feel stuck, you're reacting about something, you want to get some air. And I mean that very specifically. On the left-hand side, it's talking about things you can do with your brain. Becoming aware of what you're thinking and how you're feeling and you know, what's, what's going on for you inquiring, beginning to inquire with yourself about those things and are those beliefs or those reactions you're having, are they realistic, are they helpful, not helpful? Are you overreacting? Is your reaction about what's really happening now or is it really about uh, something that happened at work or something that happened with somebody else? And then reminding yourselves about what your rights and your responsibilities are. On the right hand side, this is where you can incorporate some things to help yourself calm down your physiological reactions. So the A is becoming aware of if you're feeling tense or tight or you're feeling hot or flushed. You know, sometimes when you're in a situation where, you, where you're interacting with somebody and you're having a reaction, sometimes you have the reaction a lot faster than your head's going and you're having some physical reactions. Your stomach's getting tight. And sometimes when your body's reacting, but your brain's not kind of following along, you have to slow down your body so your brain can kind of catch up. You have to be able to kind of take charge for yourself. So becoming aware of your body. And then this is where air really fits because you need to take a breath. You need to inhale. Your body needs oxygen to work productively. You need to slow things down by breathing in slowly and breathing out even more slowly. And on the Counseling Services website, we have a great little, very short exercise called Relax, Release, Let Go that you can do any time just to kind of slow things down so you can engage your brain, remind yourself about your rights and responsibilities. And then as you relax and you feel calmer, you'll be able to utilize those good skills, that good information that you have about your rights and your responsibilities. And then using the communication skills that you've been learning. OK, so I'm surprised. I'm getting close to the time. So ways to learn to be responsibly assertive. I've just talked about some foundation skills for you. But you can actually attend next week's Catch At. Uh, at the same time, it's going to be on nonviolent communication. You can practice the exercises we did today, just reminding yourself or exploring even what it would be like for you to, to own the rights that you haven't really owned before. Uh, you can develop and use some good self-awareness. Try the breathing. Try the exercise using the air model. And we have lots of other things across campus on trainings on conflict resolution. And that may be another thing to help you in developing skills for managing and becoming more assertive. So I am proud, 40 minutes. Let's uh, just take a few seconds and check with you all about reactions or questions from what I've just presented, because I know it's a lot of information. Was this what you expected? No, what did you expect? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what I expected, but it was nice. Was it helpful? Mm -hmm. How about others? You didn't come expecting to talk. <laughs> I can tell that. 
Okay. Well, we are going to be sending you an email asking you for some feedback because it will be helpful in how we uh, organize for the next semester topic areas, but also about how we're presenting. We are trying to do things in a shorter period of time. I know I threw a lot of information out to you, but also it's going to be useful to us in being able to show if, if what we're doing is helpful. So I know that you may not uh, um, always check your email, but I'm encouraging you to please check your email because we'll send out an email with a form and we really do want to have your feedback. Uh, we'll have this video up online and probably about um, at the end of the semester, the beginning of next semester. You're, I'm looking at, or sooner? About a week, okay. And we will have a copy of the slides uh, as well as the PDS for each of these handouts in case you want to share it with other people. Okay. Any, qu any questions right now or concerns? Well, I really appreciate you coming in and I uh, hope this has been useful. You'll probably take a little bit of time for some of it to sink in. Or if there's things that you don't agree with or the things that you think are going to be important for you to get extra help, the counseling services is available. We have lots of things on our website. Um, if you do need to talk to somebody, we can have you talk to somebody briefly uh, and then help you make some plans about what you can do uh, to the end of the semester. So, uh, And there's lots of good books we can make suggestions for, et cetera. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you were here.